uh, Sandstone Point Hotel across the water here from, uh, from Bribey. And, uh, yeah, Spring Loaded Concert was eight bands from the 90s, 1 p.m. till 9.30 p.m. Saturday night. It was, it was good. Had a few people come and stay, lots of kids, had teenage babysitters. It was heaps of fun. Yeah, sounds awesome. Yeah. One, mom, one mom even had her first night away from a baby, so that, that was a big plus. <laughs> Forever young, always stay. That's right. So welcome, everybody. Hey, hey, hey fantastic. Real's here. Let's get started. So, Sylvia, just going to mute you. It's all good. Brilliant. Well, welcome, everybody, to the first week, because well, we're restarting, of the 90-day challenge. <laughs> it's a bit of a false start with so many people in Mexico on the Ascent trip, uh, Nicole's in uh, Oregon at the moment, Sally's in, in, I think, Christchurch or Invercargill tonight. So, yeah, lots is happening. People are all over the world. But uh, we are restarting the 90-day challenge as of this week because we've had some big IT upgrades with the senior business coach and better able to track lots of cool things. So let's get stuck into it. I know there's a very similar uh, quick presentation compared to what we had a few weeks ago. But just to remind you, or those that have just joined us, because there are some new people that have just come on board, which is great, uh, what is the 90-day challenge? It's a sprint. So it's uh, basically at a focused, concentrated effort to really get some runs on the board and set you up for success. And we're going to hear from our amazing guest speaker very shortly. Uh, and I'll just quickly run through the outline of the 90 day challenge and we'll come back to the amazing Rin Rill Bergen Doyle to hear about how we do achieve those goals. So what is the commitment for the 90 day challenge? So it's weekly coaching and accountability call. This is a weekly call, 12 p.m. Eastern Australian Standard Time or Brisbane time every week at redoxtalks.com. Uh, we've got specific training and processes. And uh, for the updated Gini pro, uh, training, I recommend you look in the Shine Bright Team Facebook group and you will see what we're talking about with the contacts um, section being upgraded. A clear daily method of operation to make sure you're focused, you know what you're meant to do, and you're growing on a daily basis. So your commitment is one to two hours a day for five to six days a week and that can change your life forever. Be accountable, be responsible to your business by completing all the tasks in a weekly call. Be coachable and willing to grow, expand. Go through your blocks and fears and review the 90-day commitment and accountability agreement, which you will get from your accountability leader. Uh, the accountability groups will also be set up this week and will most likely be mainly made up of different executives through the Shine Bright team. The potential to create a $2,000 plus income. Now that's starting from scratch. That's someone who's like, doesn't have a business. Obviously people that have been at this a while, you can expand that and leverage that much more. But that's a US dollar residual income. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. So position yourself to qualify for the 2020 Ascent trip. People are literally just come back from Cancun, which is amazing. Congratulations to all the great leaders that got there. And uh, more importantly and more immediately is qualify for the incentive trips. And uh, a little bit on that, the as current Australian and New Zealand incentive trip is the Reach for the Beach trip to Bali, and that's in December, and that cutoff will finish at the end of September. If you're in the UK or Europe, that, qual that trip is a qualification to go to Winter Wonderland, and that is an ice hotel in Norway, so that's something a bit different. And uh, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, you'll have the option to earn travel dollars and a sea convention tickets. US and Canada also uh, earning travel dollars and, in, and convention tickets in September. So the weekly prizes are recognition for the top five and the weekly call to receive gifts and so forth for the top enroller. But more importantly to me is the top contactor because that you can control. You can control your activity. You may not necessarily be able to control your results. So that will all be measured through Genie. And you do need to use the contact tab or the progress report tab in Genie. So please see the new uh, Genie training from Larry McFarlane um, in the Shine Bright team Facebook group for that. Uh, and join us on the Power Hour every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. and so forth to learn more about that. So uh, in your connection with your accountability groups and the follow-up emails that will come after you register at the 90 Day Challenge link, uh, there will be the, why's, the, the why and goals form. Of course, you need to know your why and really get involved with these accountability groups. So one year, more than one year after the last 90-day uh, challenge, last year, some of these accountability groups are still going. They don't need to be your upline, downline. They can just be colleagues and friends and really build your relationship, network the network. 
with your accountability leaders, I encourage you to look at your upline and your executives, but if there's another leader in the Shine Bright team that you would really like to connect with and bond with, please reach out to them and request if you can be a part of their accountability group. So this will, all the accountability groups will be uh, set up this, uh, this week. And what next, you'll get a, an email with a recording of this call. This call is also posted to the Shine Bright team Facebook group uh, and it'll be logged as a live, um, the, the live call archive in the Shine Bright team website. Um, but yes, really focus on your, your why, your goals, and get stuck into your accountability groups and your daily method of operation. All right, so now let's, uh, let's uh, hand over to our amazing speaker. So Real Burgle Doyle, I've known Real for quite a number of years. I remember seeing her many, many years ago, and I always, always had the impression that someone that like, wow, I've got a lot of respect for, I, I'm inspired by, I love where her heart's at. So Real started consulting at the age of 21. She's consulted from, from small to huge businesses. Her last corporate position was actually CEO of a $100 million company. She set up a phenomenal charity with Step Up. I think it's like helped 16, 17,000 teenagers. Uh, she is very passionate about people achieving their business and their financial goals. She's a master of strategy and planning and helping people see the goal and break it down into what they need to do to achieve that. She's also one of the fantastic um, uh, facilitators for 90 degrees and Money and You. And I know you've all heard me talk about Money and You um, as, as a, a, a course that I did this year. So it's the oldest uh, personal development and wealth creation workshop on the planet. Uh, 41 years running. Tony Robinson's wrote his business plan on the founder of Money and You's uh, kitchen table, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, was uh, one of the original facilitators of Money and You. And I know some of you have even actually done Money and You, some of the Shine Bright team have, but many of you haven't. So please have a listen to that plug that uh, Real will give at the end of the call. But I'm going to welcome the amazing Will Burgle door to the call. Please give her a round of applause. I'm going to unmute you. Thank you, Will, for coming on the call. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to mute you all and unmute Real. Welcome, Real, to the Shine Bright team. Can you hear us? What have we done? What have I done? Real, can you hear me? Oh dear. <laughs> we have an audio issue. I can't hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? I can't hear you, sorry Real. Can anyone hear Real? No. Okay, sorry Real, there might be an issue with your mic. Um, it might have said access your microphone or in the bottom left hand corner, there's a little arrow up button. Click on that, go to audio settings and you can test your mic from there, perhaps. Check one, check two. And check the sound on your computer's not muted. That's probably another, another thing to look at. Yeah, sounds like she can hear us. I can see that her audio is connected. It's just a case of the mic. So perhaps the other issue is sometimes things like Skype, Facebook Messenger. Um, yeah, <laughs> she uses Zoom daily and today it doesn't work. Hey, this happens to us all the time when we have guest speakers. <laughs> I still can't hear you real. No, I can't hear you at all, sorry. Yeah, isn't that weird? It happens. Check one, check two. So worst case scenario, I can actually give you a phone number. You can call in on and do an audio via phone. Let me know if you need that. <laughs> it happens. It's all good. Yes, yeah, so for those of you that are wondering uh, why the reason for the restart. So, um, in Jenny, and real, just in interrupt me. Who's that? That's someone else. Okay, turn that iPhone off. Um, 
So I'll just do a quick little demonstration of that new facility in Genie while we're waiting for Real to connect to her microphone. And it's, it's a really big change to the way we, um, we connect out of Genie from a perspective that everything is tracked because you can't, me you can't manage what you don't measure. And so I'll just screen share that. But Real, just interrupt me whenever you, you're right to go. So if I jump onto uh, my see a business coach there, for example, and I go contact, see this little this little button here. Now the share button, it's got a little email and uh, text and Facebook message. If you have a um, if you have an Apple, a Mac, you can actually text and you've set up iMessage. You can actually text through your computer. So for example, I was going to um, do the Redox Rockstars. Uh, I would design my, my message in here um, if I was going to Facebook Messenger it, which has been the main thing that we haven't been able to do is track the Facebook messaging um, part of it. I would just adjust my message to that. Preview and send. If you don't have an Apple, this button just doesn't show up. That's totally fine. So whatever this message is, then I could email it or Facebook it. I have to copy that to the clipboard and this is where you're going to actually lose it because I've got the screen share on and you won't see all of that, just realised. I'll take the screen share to the whole desktop. Okay, so I actually have to clip, so that last, I go preview and send, I go Facebook, copy to clipboard, so then I go send to messenger. All the instructions are written there, so just take your time, play around with it. Now it does need to log into Facebook for the first time. So I press OK, and I cancel that, I go back to preview and send, there we go, Facebook, copy to messenger, send to messenger, and the one caveat for this is you do actually need to be friends with them on Facebook. So it goes through Facebook because sometimes you can be connected to someone on Messenger not, and not be friends with them. You do need to be friends with them to, to send the message. I just um, press paste to so paste that message in and I can send that there. Now, see this page, done sharing your message. Click OK and I'll add an entry into Janine's history. I press OK there. That is where that message is now a part of my contact communication history with Janine. That's what you need to do to get that contacted, recorded as a part of the challenge and the prizes and the recognition. Okay? So that that's, uh, is new training for uh, a senior business coach and it only came out last week. How are you going, Real? Any work, any luck with the microphone? Let's unmute you. Uh uh, I've tried on my phone. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear you. Fantastic. <laughs> Yay. All right. So, so now you've got me. <laughs> so I don't know how to turn the video off my, um, hang on one second. I'll stop the video on my phone. So you'll hear my voice and I'll be looking at the actual camera. Is that okay with everybody? <laughs> can you all see me great. and hear me? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. So you've still got your, um, can I invite, I'm get rid of that. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for your patience just then. Sorry about that. I don't know what, I've got no clue what happened then. Uh, so uh, thank you, Justin, for having me. I'm very excited to be here with you. I have just become a um, new customer. Uh, so um, uh, looking forward to sharing some, some great stuff with you guys. As Justin said, I have been a, um, I've been helping people grow their businesses, either, either my own or other people's since I was 21, so nearly 30 years now. And, uh, and they have ranged from everything from teeny weeny businesses, startups, uh, to billion dollar companies both here and in the US and, and also had a nonprofit that uh, just a message called Step Up um, and so on. So essentially my whole life has been about business growth. And there's a few things that I thought when Justin and I talked that I could share with you. Uh, to help you on your journey, particularly on the next 90 day, on this 90 day challenge, but on the larger business game that you're playing uh, as well. Uh, is, is that cool with everyone? Are you up for that? Yes, you can just give me a thumbs up so I can see that you're 
the thing. Now, someone thinks that they can't see me, but I am on one of the screens. I've just turned it off on my phone so you can see me through my laptop but can't hear me through that. What's happening there, Real, is if they have a speaker view on, it'll keep going to the black screen because that's the one that the mic is activating as the speaker. Oh, okay. So then I'll turn this one off and I'll turn the phone one on, but you'll be kind of looking up my snozzer. So hang on one second. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> hang on. Okay, now you can see me, yes? There you go. <laughs> you can see me and hear me. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, so what I was saying is I'm keen to give you some value that will make a difference hopefully for the 90 days, but also beyond that uh, if you're up for it. So hopefully everyone's up for it. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, and um, really my passion uh, is has been about people's strategy. So what do I, what do I mean by about strategy? Well, a strategy is... Uh, essentially coming up with the fastest, easiest, most effective way to get from where you are now to where you want to be. And in Latin, it comes from the old days of warfare. So uh, it was really about the general's strategy and the, what was the general's strategy to produce the outcome called win the battle and then win the war. Uh, these days, obviously, it's really about, in this context, what it's about is where are you now in the business you have and where do you want to be and by when? So let's say you want to say, well, I want to be at, what's the top level, Justin? What's the, what's the big triple, winner? Triple presidential diamond. So there you go. Triple quite, presidential diamond. Quite good. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. So that's a big kahuna and you want to be there. Where, by when do you want to be there? Uh, that's the first thing to figure out. So, uh, that's a, so what I mean by that is the first thing to figure out is what do you want? So everyone please write that down. Some of you may have done this work. I find a lot of people get into um, business, general business, but also into network marketing businesses where they're very inspired, very um, excited, very moved by what's possible, and then uh, typically get busy. Does everyone know what I mean by that? You get busy uh, versus actually doing the thinking about where you want to end up where do you want to land and by when um and i often talk about with people if you might want to write this down busyness does not equal business it's doing the right things at the right time with the right intention and you've, you've got an enormous network of coaches obviously by the program you're in here uh you've got people who've already been on this path and done it so it would really, for me, be about success modeling some of them and, and asking what they're doing. And for a time, probably even just following uh, what they've been doing. But in the meantime, you need to do, in my experience, of, I'll talk about a regular business, okay, for now. And then I want you to map that onto your own. So what happens, I've been, as I said, consulting and advising other people's businesses, other, other entrepreneurs, all growing my own uh, very successfully for nearly 30 years now. And one of the things I find constantly is that people get into whatever business they're in and then they get really busy, they tend to get overwhelmed and then they don't really ever stop, um, very rarely stop and go, hang on a minute, how am I tracking versus where I wanted to be? Where did I want to be again? I can't really even remember because when you come in, you often have a thought about what that might be but then you get into it and you either have setbacks or you get pushed forward and either way, you probably need to adjust where you say you want to be. So that happens in every standard business out there. And I'm absolutely certain, I've done a lot of work with network marketing companies, I'm absolutely certain it happens for you guys as well. So really what I would say to a, uh, what I'd say to any business is, okay, there's four reasons to go into business. Okay, now because we've got a lot of you on the call, I won't open it up to you guys telling me what the four are because it'll probably take us a while and mess up the sound. And <laughs> I don't want to risk breaking it. So, uh, is that okay with the run? I'll just tell you what, in my 30 years, what I've found to be the most common for top four reasons for going into business. And it's true, it doesn't matter which format of business you use. So number one is wealth creation. Clearly, people want to be able to earn more under their own steam than they think they can earn in a job. So it's really about that wealth creation piece. The, and I'm sure that's true for you guys. Right? Would that be a fair assumption to say that you guys are, are keen for the wealth creation piece? Absolutely. Thumbs up, nods, got it. No, um, health and poverty. <laughs> very good. And then uh, 
And then the second um, reason is uh, some people would call it lifestyle. Some people would call it control, uh, being your own boss, uh, really being able to say what you do, when you do it, how you do it, and why you do it. Uh, again, mostly coming down to that sense of control or being the, being the one in the driver's seat. Uh, and other people would call that lifestyle, being able to take time off, being able to not have to ask for that, all that stuff. Um, and uh, uh, that would be the second main reason. And then what often happens to people is they end up instead working for a lunatic <laughs> called themselves, who works really hard, who pushes them even harder than a boss would ever push them, who sacrifices stuff, who gives up their health, who stops worrying about this, that or the other thing that, that a normal person would do in a job because you're just completely on the line now for the whole result, okay? So we don't want that either. We've got to find that healthy balance. <laughs> uh, and then the, um, the third reason is that there is something uh, that you want to add value to. There's something you see happening in the world or in your community that you want to make a difference to. And if I looked at a traditional business, it might be a mechanic that's working for another mechanic business. They think the mechanic business is not doing a great job or the whole industry is not doing a great job and they want to create a model that's new, so they go out and create their own mechanic business. So that's what I mean. Like you see something that needs doing, you find a vehicle for that, in, ca in this case, health-related. Uh, you want to make a difference in that and so you want to add value in that sector and maybe you loved the product, you used it so much, it made a difference for you, now you want to run a business in that. Fantastic. But that's really about adding value to others, which is a fundamental premise, by the way, that we talk a lot about in Money New, which I'll say more about later. The uh, fourth thing is really your self-expression and identity. So, um, so really being able to express who you are for yourself and who you want to be for others. Uh, and what I mean by that is, again, inside, um, you know, how you want to be seen, how you want to see yourself, the person you want to become. It's really about that self-expression, your identity. So say for me, uh, I'm an absolutely terrible employee. <laughs> Terrible, 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 terrible. I've been an employee plenty of times. Uh, I'm not saying I was a terrible employee while I was there, but even when I was in the CEO, my last role was the CEO of a $100 million company and I had equity in that company. Uh, and I didn't like it much. I mean, I loved the role, but I didn't like having to get permission. Permission's not a big thing for me. <laughs> Anyone relate to that? You don't really, you don't like asking for permission. That's part of why you, you know, some of you, that's part of why you're here. So, so say, say for me, that's part of my identity now. I'm nearly 50. There's, you know, it's, it'd be hardcore for me to pick going back to being an employee. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I, we love, I, it's great. It's just now lo no longer fits with who I am for myself. Does this make sense for everybody? So, you know, you might be there or on your way to there in this, in this game. So those are the big four reasons that people go into business. And what I find in traditional business and even network marketing businesses, uh, typically do pretty well on items three and four. You know, you're pretty clear, you're living a lot, you're kind of living what you want or you're on your path to living what you want in terms of your self-expression, your identity. You're clearly adding value to the people you are touching and working with. Um, and then there's really about that lifestyle control and, and then the revenue and wealth creation that needs to be worked on. Is that fair to say for everybody? I keep looking behind me because I've got the videos behind me so I can see your faces over there. Yeah. Uh, so, so really then what I tell people to do is you need to stop for a second and pause and ask yourself, what do you want this business to give you? I was very lucky and blessed to get to work with a gentleman named Michael Gerber when I was 21, 22 years old. Michael wrote a book called The E-Myth, The E-Myth Revisited. If you have not read that book, you need to write that down and read it or get it on an Audible or something. Uh, you need to do that. The other one he's got that I love, most people said he was, must have been smoking pot when he wrote it, but I love it. It's called The PowerPoint. came out after The E-Myth. It's most, very unknown compared to The E-Myth, but it's fantastic. And it talks about finding that point of power in the business, which is where you get all your leverage. So, so both of those books are fantastic. But I got to work with um, um, Michael at a very early age and started to appreciate the value of a system. You guys have a, a system. But also Michael talked about uh, a business is a vehicle that's supposed to give you what you want. It's a vehicle to give you those four things. If, so we need to work that vehicle to give us those four things. Does this make sense? So, uh, so 
what I find most businesses owners don't, they often, one of the mistakes they make is they forget to stop and say, well, hang on a minute. What do I want this vehicle, this machine I now have access to, which you guys are network marketing is a machine. It's a system. It's a process. It's a combination of all of that. And it's a brand that's already built for you. So it's extremely leveraged. So how do you make that leverage machine actually, uh, work for you and what do you want that vehicle to give you so in terms of your family your lifestyle etc so if we just do first of all um uh, i'm going to ask you a, a magic number okay so i'm going to do two things justin if it's okay i'm going to do a magic number a magic lifestyle and then i'm going to tie it back to using the 90 days to start towards that okay so uh um so if i could draw your picture <laughs> I, I would draw uh, on the um, bottom left-hand corner, I would draw a box that stands for now, okay, on a page. If you want to draw this for me, just get a blank sheet of paper, draw a box at the bottom left-hand corner of, of your sheet of paper, just a small box and, and write now next to it, okay? And that's the revenue. And then what you want to do there is put down the, um, you know, the gross sales. We, we'll do it in gross sales and we'll come back. So that might be the gross sales. At the very top right-hand corner, I want you to do a, 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 small, a small box and then above that, a slightly larger box. <laughs> so if I was talking to a traditional business owner, I'd go, great, the small box in the top right-hand corner is the profit. That's what the business pays out to you. Not counting wages, just pure payment. Thanks for coming. Did a great job. Here's the value you added. Here's some money back for you. Does that make sense for everyone? And then the top box, the larger box at the top, uh, is your gross revenue box. Now, I know network marketing, it works differently. You do gross sales and then you get a piece of that, becomes your gross and then you've got your own expenses to come out of that, right, Justin? Yeah, so, so I'll, just, I'll finish the example from a traditional business and then we'll work it out for you guys. So in a traditional business, I was talking to a traditional business owner, I'd say, great, that little box there, what do you want that to be? We're gonna call that your magic number. And then based on the fact that, let's say your business does 30% net profit, we need that gross revenue number in two, three, five years from now to be, say, three million. If, if the magic number is one, we would need the gross revenue to be three. Does this make sense? Everybody clear? And, so, and then if you look back to where they're starting from now, they might be starting from, I don't know, maybe they're doing half a million bucks in gross revenue. Okay. So then the question is, well, if that's my magic corner, that's what I want up the top there on the right, and this is where I am now, how do I work backwards from that? And there's a couple of reasons why that's important. One is, what do most business owners, including network marketers, do? Where do they look? Where do they look when they're thinking about the future results they want to create? What do they look to? Where they do they look to the past. I was going to let them answer that, Justin. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> being efficient. So, uh, yes, most business owners, network marketers or otherwise, look to the past. So they go, well, we did X, Y, Z last year. Based on that, I reckon we can grow by 5% uh, or 10% this year. So therefore, our target this year will be X, the target year after will be Y, the target year after will be that. So they're working forwards from their current circumstances. Is everyone clear on that? That's what they're doing. They're looking to the past and working forwards from those circumstances where – what I have found working from teeny weeny businesses to billion dollar companies is that doesn't, that, that is a hard road to hope because it means that you're forever limited by your current circumstances. So people are basing their future based on the past instead of creating uh, the future they want and working backwards from that. So it is way easier to work backwards from a goal than it is to work forwards because when you're working forwards, you're constantly present to the circumstances you currently have. Is this making sense for everyone? You'll be limited in your mindsets. You'll be limited in your funding. You'll be limited in your, um, even your beliefs about what's possible. It just, it's, uh, it's harder. So what it, what it technically is, is you end up in what we call a past present loop where you're just looping. The past keeps showing up in the present, pretty much looks very similar. You see businesses do this time and time again where their, their um, numbers look pretty much pretty close to the same constantly, okay? Does everyone know what I mean? You've probably been in businesses in the past that were like that or you know people who are in business like that where they're not really growing at any great rate. They're just 
more of the same, slightly better every year and nothing exponential about it. So what we're looking for here is, well, what's it going to take to create some exponential growth for you? And in my experience, it is to go forward to what you say you want and work backwards from that. Now, I'm going to get, give you a chance to do that by having you look at your magic number. So in a normal business, I'd say, what's your magic number? Someone might say, well, I want a million dollars out of this business for me, for my family each year. Great. If you want a million bucks and we know your 30% profit rate, net profit percentage, then we, need, we know you need to do $3.3 million. Is everyone following me so far? Okay. Now, some people, when it comes to talking about numbers, they do this thing where they say, I'm confused. <laughs> oh my God, I'm confused. So if you notice yourself doing that, I want you to consider it as a story. You're not confused. You just haven't done the work yet around the money. And, and no, no, I, I'm a woman, so I feel free to say this. For the females on the call, it is, it is a thing we have been socialised about, in my view. And it's a story we keep in place. And it stops us from being the powerhouses we are. If you run a story that you don't get numbers, you are truly, excuse my language, well, I was going to swear, but I won't, stuffed. Because if you are not at the source of your numbers, you are not at the source of your business. Now, I learned that the hard way and lost everything. I had my share alone of my, my a, a large company I created was, I don't know, 14 million bucks. Lost a lot because I allowed others to lead the charge around the numbers. I said they were smarter than me. They weren't, actually. So... You've got to own the numbers, ladies and gents. A lot of men have wives that run the numbers. It's the exact opposite. They let the wives do all the bookkeeping and run all the numbers. And they wouldn't have a clue. So it, it, I, I'm not, I, it's really everybody. You've got to, as a business owner, you have to own your numbers. So, um, so uh, yeah. So, therefore, you have to do the thinking. And you can't hide in, I'm confused. So, what you would do is, if you struggle with it, you would find someone in your group, in this group or your network and say, can you, let's do the numbers together, but don't make them do them for you. Sit with them and go, right, I want this business to give me this. I figure it's probably got, I've probably got to do this in gross, uh, in my personal takeaway from the, from the network marketing business, which means I've got to do this in gross. Is this right? Or I'm, can you help me work it out? And great, if this is my number, then awesome. What's it going to look like? So year five, I've got to hit this level. Year four, I've got to hit this. Year three, I've got to hit this. Year two, I've got to hit this. Year one, I've got to hit this. Year one, let's break it down into our 90-day challenges. Bang, I'm going to hit my year one target. Does this make sense? But you've got to do the maths. <laughs> the maths is the marketing. The maths is the magic. You have to do the maths. And once you do it, you'll be so empowered by it, it's ridiculous. Now, those of you who've done it, congrats, awesome. Just use this call to refine the maths. So, uh, so, so we're going we, we're gonna to acknowledge where we are now, our current position, and we're going to be informed by the past. We're not going to be driven from the past. Does this make sense? So whatever you've got today, great, that's what you've got today. And you're obviously on this call because you're up to bigger stuff and you want to hit some bigger numbers. So don't be driven by that. Don't be at the effect of that. Just be present to this is where I've been. Finish. Great. <laughs> you are not your results. You have your results. Okay. Now, the big play is to figure out what you want. The number one thing to figure out is what you want. So please write this down. What do I want? And you could say, okay, great. In five years' time, I want to be a triple diamond presidential, whatever Justin said, <laughs> that, that big name, okay? And you go, awesome. Well, a triple diamond presidential, whatever the who, does this in, um, in cash out to them and in the, the monies to them and then in gross sales for the brand, right? So you could do that. And I think Justin's been posting in the chat some stats about that. But you want to think about uh, what you want. For, don't, don't, now, listen, here's the other thing. Don't get caught in, oh, my God, I have to get to triple presidential, whatever the hell. Uh, don't get caught in that. 
and you also don't want to get caught in, well, I'm only little old me. I think I can only get to blah, blah, blah. No, you've got to pick something that is a stretch. It's got to be a stretch for you. It should, it should scare you a little bit and be vaguely exciting at the same time. It should be scary and exciting at the same time. That's the definition of a magic number. That's the what do you want number. That number, what I mean by that magic number, by the way, and I'm going to get you to write this down a question in, in a second. So I want you to think about this. Let's forget about the titles for a second and let's go back to the maths. If this business could pay you a recurring, Justin, should I do a recurring passive income or should I do it on profit after expenses included in the network marketing business? I do recurring passive income. I think that makes the most sense for everyone. Okay, great. So uh, recurring passive income per annum from this business. You don't, ha you don't have to work for that. And that is the number this business is going to pay you each year. And it'll probably it'll grow, obviously. But let's just say it's, the, it's, it's absolutely what you want. It's a magic number. What is that magic number? So go ahead and write that down now. If you're sitting with a partner, do it separately. That's perfect because that actually uh, ties in with our income disclosure statement. Great. So what is your magic number is what I'm asking. So what is that passive revenue you want to achieve? You want to get paid every year, year on year, minimum. It, it'll grow for sure. But this is a number that if you got to this number, you'd be like, holy, sh holy, oh my goodness. This is why I came here. This is what I wanted. This is amazing. Holy Batman. Okay. So go ahead and write that magic number down now. Now, by the way, the magic number really, if it's not pass based, will be a little bit scary and a little bit exciting at the same time. You should actually have no idea how you're technically going to get there. Mostly. That's what mostly happens to people is they're like, well, I don't know. I think it's this, but that's okay. Just write down whatever you want it to be. Don't be worried about what the structures are, etc. Just uh, write down what your magic number is. Everyone got one? Everyone got one? Nodding at me. There's a whole heap of people who don't have their videos on, which is a total bummer because I can't see you. But uh, I'm going to have a couple of people, if they're brave enough, a couple of people that are willing to share their magic number. And Justin, you know pretty much everyone on this call, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a fun little game that I do personally when I'm leading this publicly. I'm going to, what we're going to do is we're going to pass you or about you based on your magic number. And that is going to be based on two things. One, it's too small for the person you're known to be already, despite whatever your circumstances might be, uh, or it's too big in that you're overreaching. And there's no problem overreaching. Like I've done this before and people go, well, I want to have $10 billion. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But do we think the vehicle's going to give you that in five years' time? Probably not. So, uh, so, and it's the same as if you notice people so you'll see some people play small. Do you guys know what, it, you know what I mean by that, right? They'll yep. diminish their number to play yep. small and stay safe. Yep. That's just as dangerous, probably worse, in fact, than embiggening the number. Making, making the number bigger is the same thing. It's all self-worth. It's all valid, self-validation. It's all of that. So if you have to embiggen it, then there's probably something going on where you've got to, you feel like you've got to be better than you are and actually you're probably perfect as you are. If you're playing too small, you, you think of yourself smaller than other people see you usually. Does everyone get what I mean by all that stuff? Yep. Now, sorry, one other thing. I'll say why all of this is so critical after we've done this magic number thing and you'll get why I'm banging on about your personal development stuff in there as well. Okay, so who's going to be brave and share their magic number? Okay, Janine had her hand up first. Go, Janine, what's your magic number, darling? 240000 per annum. Passive income. That yeah. Pass, pa ching. You sure? <laughs> oh, just, yeah, that's my first goal. That's what I'm working on at the moment. Okay, great. Well, let me so let me ask it again. In five years' time, what do you want your magic number to be? Yeah, that's a year. By, goal. by hey. the way, everyone. By the way, everyone, do that now. Please answer the question. In five years' time, what do you want your magic number to be? So we're in 2019 now. So in 2024, what do you want your magic number to be? I still reckon it's 240, 240,000. Oh, that's a year goal for you, Janine. Oh, God. Okay, well, let's push it up a bit. Uh, 240, well, let's go to 340. Yeah. 
That's better? Okay, that's my five-year goal. Yep, all right. Am I, did I pass? <laughs> I'm not actually sure on that. I, I think you should be an ambassador in five years. Okay, what's the, what's the income for that? Well, 400 plus. Okay, all right, why not? Now, I mean, uh, to me, it's a half a million. Okay, there you go. I'm By the way... If you guys are in a system and you're not clear on the um, rewards level of each of those levels, you won't ever get there. Yeah. You won't ever get there because your brain is not focused on, okay, my five-year play is to be an ambassador or what's the one above ambassador, Justin? Uh, presidential. So okay, great. What's the triple diamond presidential? Double, triple presidential, double presidential, triple presidential. Okay, and what's a triple presidential earning on, on a residual income basis? Uh, a lot. There's none in Australia. There's only one in the world. And I think she's uh, three million or something. Okay, what? great. So then the doubles and the singles and the presidentials are doing what? So ambassador's 400 plus a year. Um, 200, and, sorry, I just did 144 is the minimum Australian diamond payment. So that's just diamond. And there's double diamond, triple diamond. Okay, and Okay, got it. So one of the things I would really encourage you guys to do as part of the 90 day thing, Justin, and maybe you can do this with these guys on another call is go through what the levels are. Now, don't get confronted by the levels. The game is the maths. So if, if an ambassador is 400,000 plus a year in residual income, you go, great. Well, what does that look like? That looks like this many of that and that many of this. That's what it looks like. Well, how many of those do I have now? Oh, great. So there's the gap. Simple. There's the gap. And then all you spend the next each year doing is closing the gap. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Does this make sense for everyone? Because you can get really overwhelmed with triple diamond, double this, blah, 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 but all you want to look at is the number and then the gap. Their number, your number of all the items you can measure. <laughs> Justin's got a chart for you apparently. So uh, I would, if that's a chart of what they're doing and how much they're getting, blah, 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 I would have that on my wall. I'd be looking at it every day. And then I'd be writing down where I am right now and then looking at, well, this is the gap. And all there is is close the gap. That's it. All there is is close the gap. Every year, close the gap. Every year, close the gap. Every year, close the gap. Till so five years time, you hit whatever the one you said you wanted. Now it's up to you what you say you want. And it's personal. By the way, strategy is personal and it's driven by the business owner. So if you say, I want uh, a million dollars from this business every year. Well, listen, your strategy your actions, your way of being as a leader of that business is going to be a shit ton different than someone says, I want a hundred grand from this business. Does everyone get that? Completely different strategies, completely different actions required, completely different level of personal leadership and responsibility required, completely different level of being, beingness. We're human beings, not doings, right? So uh, I can say more about that later. But so your strategy is very personal to you. But I, what I'm saying with your magic number is make sure you're stretching so that you're stretching your personal. <laughs> so if, if, if Janine could easily go 240, yeah, I'm already on for 240, that's what I'm playing for. That's not a stretch. That she's already playing for that. So then she's got to say, well, actually, my stretch number is half a million bucks. And then she says, oh, shit, half a million. Jesus, what would I, what, what would I be doing differently to get half a million? Well, to get half a million, I'd have to be doing this. I'd have to be doing that. I'd have to be doing this. I'll give an example, actually, that might give you some inspiration a very good friend of mine is a gold medal Olympian. And uh, she won bronze. Uh, her first Olympics, she won bronze. And then she went to an event with a with the keynote speaker. And weirdly enough, the keynote speaker just happened. I mean, just completely randomly happened to say, well, whoever remembers bronze? <laughs> In his speech, he literally said, well, whoever remembers bronze? Nobody remembers bronze. If you're lucky, you remember silver. But whoever, no one remembers bronze. And she was in the room, right? So you can imagine steam coming out of her ears. <laughs> and then she goes up to him and says, dude, what was that about? And he's, what? He's, what, that whole thing about bronze? <laughs> before he even goes to answer her, he, he, she stops and says, uh, while I'm incredibly annoyed, think of another term for that, uh, you're 100% right. You're absolutely 100% right. So how do I hit gold? And then that guy became her head coach, her, her mindset, uh, where her head was at coach, 
right up until she got gold. Okay. Now, uh, what was interesting with her is that she realized that she hadn't said, okay, I'm going to be a gold medalist. So therefore working backwards from that, what do I have to do to close the gap from gold medal to bronze medal? So what happens was once she got that, that she hadn't been doing that, she was like, okay, great. So she went, she said, I am going to get gold at the next Olympics. I am going to get gold. And I'm the gold medalist for the next Olympics. And then she went and started interviewing gold medal Olympians. What were you doing? What were you doing in the year up to in the couple of years leading up? What were you doing differently? Which coaches did you have? What training were you doing? What nutrition thing were you doing? How was your attitude? What were you doing with your head? Blah, 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 blah. She even learned to sing the national anthem because she realized when she got bronze she couldn't sing it properly. She wore gold pajamas. She got gold shampoo. She bought a gold car. She literally, where, everywhere we went, if we saw something gold, I, I once bought her gold salt. <laughs> it's a gold salt from some godforsaken place. Anyway, but everyone played the game of her getting gold, but mostly she did. She suddenly went, I'm saying I want to be gold, but I'm actually not doing the thinking to work backwards from getting gold. Does everyone get that? And mostly in business, we say, oh, I want to be ambassador. But then you don't do the thinking of what does it look like to be an ambassador? Well, it looks like uh, this and this and this and this and this and this. And you could go and interview them. I'm sure in your network, you'd be very welcome to interview people who are at that level going, well, what did you do? How did you do it? How's your life look now? But when, before you earned all that money, before you got that residual, what did it look like? What were you doing? And they'll probably tell you very similar to what everyone on that chart that Justin just showed you is going to tell you. But the, it's really important that you've got to do that. What does it actually look like to, to get that result? And, of course, you, she got gold. Next Olympics, she got gold. Uh, next Olympics after that, she got fourth. <laughs> next Olympics after that. But she'd been in the sport for 20 years, peak performance for 20 years. Is that an achievement? Yes. But mostly her biggest achievement was getting gold. So, uh, so what's your gold medal? What, what is your gold medal is the question and what does that look like in terms of a business model? Okay, so someone's just shared in the chat, I think that their game is a, is a million. Uh, oh, <laughs> very good. Oh, Isabella, very good. So, uh, excellent. So, um, a million bucks, fantastic. So then you go, okay, great. Well, what does that look like in number of customers, in number of products purchased, in people who opt in for the business option versus people who just use it, consumers? What does it all look like? And I'm pretty sure in that chart, Justin's got views, probably modeled all of that. Um, so, uh, so that's the thinking I need you to do. So your magic number now, well, some of you did now, but then I want you to look back from five years from now. What's that magic number? Everyone got your five year one as well? And then you've got to do the work. What does it actually look like? And so I think Justin in the chat has put in, um, uh, oh, Go, Isabella. Uh, <laughs> and Anya said 1.5 in five years, silver by end of challenge, diamond by March next year. Very inspiring. Um, fantastic. Just to everyone, gratitude for the person I'm living into. Brilliant. Uh, 1.5 million working 24 hours a week. Fantastic. So um, that's what you want to do is work backwards from that. And what I'd suggest you do in the 90 day challenge is maybe buddy up with someone and do the thinking of what it will look like at that five year mark. And what would it look like at the 12 month mark when you hit your target? Um, so Justin's got in here, Diamond has a weekly PGV of 30,000. Therefore, their gross sales would be 15,000 above 150 by 139,000 US dollars. Is that right? Of what? That's weekly. Weekly gross sales. 39,000 a week. Okay, great. By the way, we are surrounded with people who are very successful in the network marketing business. We have a friend of ours that does 100 million a year in another brand and he remembers a time where he couldn't eat so you know you cannot be determined by your current circumstances you just got to keep playing for that future by the way when i said that past present cycle that people get into the other thing is when you create a magic number and you really stay present to that and you do the thinking and the work of what will that look like what does that look like and where is the gap from where i am to now to where i want to be um what your doing is you're keeping yourself in a future present loop in a future present loop so the future you're living into you're making decisions in the present based on that future does this make sense for everybody yeah. it's very different 
you're not making it based on the current circumstances or the past. You're making it based on this is the future I'm building. So these are the actions I take today. These are the actions I take this month. These are the actions I take this year. This is a decision I make based on that future, not based on the circumstances I have or the past I've experienced. Is that clear for everyone? So if you're playing a game to hit a million or 1.5 million or even half a million or even 240,000, there's no wrong answer here as long as it's a stretch because we only move forward by stretching. Uh, so um, uh, as long as it's a stretch, then that's the number you've got to stay present to. I would have it plastered all over your space. I'd have it in your shower. I mean, every, every really ridiculously successful person I know literally has laminated stuff in their shower. <laughs> and I, I, I have cleaners. They come and they must think I'm mental. But I don't care. I don't care. Why do I care? <laughs> I'm, that's, so what, keep it present is what I'm saying. I don't care how you do it. Keep it present. So that, that even when you're having a really crappy day and someone said no or three people said no in a row or someone gave you shit for being in network marketing or whatever it might be, uh, you go, okay, great. Whew, dust that off. That was yesterday. The game is this. Now, what I would equate it to to keep a really empowering context for yourself is how many people will you have made a difference to? Yeah. How many people will you have made a difference to, to when you hit that target? You know, for Janine, when you, you're doing 240 a year, that means you've made a difference to at least this many people at any given moment. And I'm sure, Justin, in that chart, you could work it out with them if it's not already listed there. But that, for me, is way more inspiring. Uh, and, and it's probably a way for, to keeping... Some of you aren't that driven by money. Some of you are. It doesn't really matter. If you keep both together, you'll always keep, your, keep yourself in an empowering context and keep your feet grounded. Keep yourself grounded because you've got the number and then the people that means you're impacting positively. So I really encourage you to do that. So then you've got your magic number and then you've also got your magic lifestyle. That's the next question. What's your magic lifestyle? Well, I don't want to work at all. I want to have enough in this business that I, I could retire and it would keep paying me for the next 20 years, whatever. Or I want to work a few days a week because I've got enough. Uh, all I'm doing in, that, in those days that I am working is supporting the people in my network. Whatever it is, you need to think about what is the lifestyle you want to create inside this model. And I'm sure Justin can give you some guidance on that as well. In a traditional business, say, for example, if someone says, well, I want to work three days a week, we go, great. Well, you need a general manager or, uh, and we need to pay him 200 grand and chuck that in the budget. So now it's not 3.3, it's 3.5 plus on cost is 3.6. So now we've got to get the revenue to hit 3.6 to give you your magic million because we're not messing with the million, we're messing with the revenue. Does this make sense? You never mess with your magic number. You only mess with the top line. So if you, if you, if you want to pay staff inside your network marketing business, then you want to add that to the gross revenue you need to accomplish. Okay. Okay, good. So magic number, magic lifestyle, and then your strategy works back from that. So then you look at, well, if this is what it looks like at that point, what's the year before going to look like? What's the year before that going to look like? What's the year before that going to look like? And what's this year going to look like? Because we're, we're, the whole point of strategy is to go, this is where I am now, but that's where I want to end up. How do I work backwards from that in the fastest, most leveraged, most profitable way, most efficient way? So I would work backwards by year, and I'm sure you've got coaches in this network who help you work that out. If you were to say, Janine now says, oh, I, I want to be an ambassador in five years, great. Well, then we go, great. The year before you're going to be here, the year before you're going to be here, the year before you're going to be here, the year before you're going to be here. And then all you do is focus like crazy on hitting the first target. So whatever your target is for this year, in so, but see, a lot of you will have done targets without having gone out five years and working backwards from that. So I'd invite you to shift and have a look and go, well, if my target in five years' time is double diamond or double presidential, whatever it is, then actually, phew, I might need to move a bit quicker. Or some of you will have been stuck in a similar position. You plateaued at a certain point because you don't have this, what we call brightness of the future. You're not being called into anything bigger than what you're doing now. You want to do a bit bigger, you know, you wouldn't mind doing a bit bigger, but what we actually want to look for is how you make a, uh, uh, a bigger shift. What if our chronological, chronology is against us? Well, you just play for what you want in whatever time frame you want it and get as much support as you can. <laughs> but look, I, I have a family. I literally have a, uh, my stepmother's father arrived in Australia with, at 47 with nothing, died at 84 with 300 million. So it can be done in a very short space of time. And his was a traditional business model, not like you guys. You guys have a massive, massive leverage on your side and low capital investment. He did not have that. So anything's possible. But you've got to pick what for you you want by a certain time frame and then go your hardest with that and get 
uh, as much support as you can to get there. And I think you've got a great group here to support you. And I know Justin's amazing. Um, so that was, that was one piece I wanted to share with you. Has that been thought provoking? Has anyone gotten some value out of that? Absolutely. Love, love the, the, the piece about stretching. Yes. Have to stretch. Um, so the other reason why we say that, and I'm not sure, what, I'm, not, I'm not present to time, Justin, so you've got to tell me how much we've got left because I will bang on for as long as you let me. Uh, <laughs> how about we give you another 10? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the last thing I'll leave you with then is um, two things. One is, if you could write this down, your business, bank account, relationships, whatever you want to put in that blank, your business, let's go with your business being this is a business, you're in business here, right? So your business is a reflection of you. Your business is a reflection of you. The good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Now, you could go, oh, God, that's disempowering because my business is not so hot right now, okay? Or you could go, woohoo, I'm nailing it. <laughs> Usually where we end up is somewhere in the middle. And do not let that disempower you. What you want to look at is generally our businesses will, will, uh, are a reflection of us. And the reason I know this is that, uh, I, well, <laughs> I've had 30 years of experience this, but when I first started consulting and growing other people's businesses, I noticed that if the client was really disheveled, let's say the person was really disheveled, then how do you think their business was? Their business was disheveled, it was disorganized, they're all over the shop, their team didn't know what they were doing, they didn't have any systems, it's a mess, okay? Uh, or if a person was really um, uh, perfect, they were super structured, how do you think their business was? generally pretty rigid and customers don't like rigid. People don't like rigid. Team do not like rigid. So uh, they'd have a different set of issues to deal with. And time and time again, and I was very young. I was only 21. I was 23 when I had my first business. Six months after I did Money in You, started my first business. And I really got, really with young eyes, I didn't know this was how it worked. I was like, that's crazy. This is bizarre. Why is, he's like that and this business is like that and it's exactly the same. <laughs> and it's been true for me right through to meeting people who've built billion dollar businesses. It's, it's absolutely, and, and it's been my experience for nearly 30 years. And so what that means then is that if you look, your business will be really strong at the stuff you're strong at. It'll be really weak at the stuff you're weak at. So if you're weak at the numbers, you won't even be present to the numbers and then you won't be guided by that. And so your strategy will not, you will not have a strategy you'll just keep doing more of what you've been doing. So uh, I really invite you to look at uh, having a big picture to play for, working backwards from that, and in the process being very aware of your business being a reflection of you. If you like to avoid conversations, then that will be showing up in your bank account in this business. If you undervalue yourself, you will struggle to stand up for the fact that you're in a really cool network marketing group. Uh, if you don't appreciate your self-worth, you might have issues with the pricing where you won't be able to ask for the order. So our businesses are reflections of our stuff. <laughs> our stuff shows up everywhere, right? We think we're, human beings tend to think we compartmentalize things. We're, we're this way at home, we're this way at work, we're this way. No, we're not. We're the same wherever we are. <laughs> and it shows up. However, we're, wherever we're empowered, it will bleed out in our business. Wherever we're disempowered, it will bleed out in our business. So the thing to do is keep growing the stuff you're empowered with and deal with as quick as you can the stuff that you know is a block for you. You already know. Most of you on this call, you will know the things you resist. How many of you know the things you resist in this business? You know it, right? Making, asking for the order, conversations with people, telling them it's network marketing, whatever it might be. That stuff you need to deal with as quick as you can because you will not, we cannot, it, you know, being in business is the greatest personal development program on the planet. My husband and I were just talking about this morning going, damn it, <laughs> seriously, does it have to be like that? But it is, it just is. It's just every time you get to a next level, there's a next goddamn level to get to. <laughs> it's very annoying, but also very rewarding, right? When we stop resisting it. So I really invite you to take that on. And part of why we're so passionate about what we do 
and Justin's now been to our program is, um, is that it helps you shift that really quickly, particularly in your relationship to money and wealth and value who you are uh, as an entrepreneur. Um, and so, you know, we'd love to um, have you come and do money in you. It's a very fast way to deal with some of that guff. Uh, very good, Isabella. And you won't be the only one. There'll be tons of you. And, and look, there's stuff to deal with. There is an impact to how the network marketing industry ran for a certain number of years. It doesn't run like that anymore, but there's a thing to deal with. So there's a way to position that so it's really powerful. Uh, and, and there's lots of different ways you can do it that will, that where you find your voice in that conversation. So, um, so some of you, it will be about worth or what we call deservability. You don't really deserve it. You're going to work really hard, but you don't really deserve it. So it's lots of hidden beliefs in our back, in our minds about money and about worth and about value that are all programmed in us when we're very little. You know, if you think about uh, money, money is the root of all evil. <laughs> really? Or is it the lack of money? Uh, you know, there's, uh, if you think about a human being like an iceberg, all the stuff we can see about you at the tip of the iceberg is the overt stuff. Under the waterline is all of our patterns, programming, beliefs, uh, and limiting beliefs, our fears, our confidences, all of that is under the surface. What Money and You does is through games and activities, and it's fun, right, Justin? It's fun and engaging uh, and sometimes challenging, but nothing good is, nothing great that produces great results isn't going to give you some challenges. The Money and You is designed to drive all of that up so that you can see it and deal with it and transform it right there and then. So once you see that you've got a particular belief about yourself or about money or about entrepreneurship or about business or about network marketing, it literally transforms on the spot. So that's the real opportunity of our work. And I'm sure Justin can talk about that. Uh, it's a three and a half day live program. We'd love you to come. The best way to do it, because now is not appropriate, but I just want to give you a little taster of it. Um, we've set up a special price for uh, Justin. Um, so normally it's five, four, nine, five plus GST because you're part of Justin's crew. It's two, five, nine, five plus GST. So you've got a big fat whack off that. Thanks to Justin. Yay, Justin. <laughs> uh, the other one we have is we do have another one called powerful presentations is actually on this weekend. Uh, and it's really about communication and how you present yourself. So if any of you are struggling with how you, um, let's say sell or have conversations about network marketing or about the product, uh, that's also a fast track way to deal with that. Cause again, that's all going to be internal stuff. Um, so anyway, love you to come and participate. Love you to come and check it out. Justin's obviously done money in you. Uh, he can speak to you about it. He'll get you a link. Uh, and we'd love to have you come and play. So, but how many of you got value or thought provoking, at least started a conversation, um, uh, out of our conversation today? Just wave at me. Those of you who can't wave at me, wish you could wave at me. <laughs> Uh, excellent. Well, then my job here is done. You got some value, get some thinking, do the work, just do the thinking around the numbers. Do not be scared of the numbers. They are the access to some serious freedom. So Justin, thanks so much for having me. I hope it was a value. It was amazing. Real. Thank you so much. I think you just really cemented a whole lot of ideas, particularly the thinking, thinking, grow rich, visualizing, living into the future, know the numbers. It's all amazing stuff. You're uh, an extraordinary leader, Rill. We're super grateful to have you on the team and on the call. Thank you for all you delivered and really Thank encourage you. people like I have before. Money You is a fantastic program. I really enjoyed it and it changed my mindset and I'm really excited about where I'm moving forward uh, in this business and uh, that had a lot to do with my recent exposure to Money and You and Rill and her team. So let's fantastic. give her a round of applause. Yay. Thank you. And sorry, one, one last thing I just want to say in case I didn't close that circle is once you do your five year, then you. Oh, sorry, I was just trying to mute people and I cut you off. Say again, please. Oh, there we go. I was just going to say, I don't know if I closed the loop. So once you do your five year or three year or whatever it is goal, uh, then you want to do down to this year and then you want to break it down to your 90 days. So you're really clear on what you're playing for in this particular 90 days. So if you've got, if it's a 12 month game to hit 240, great. The last quarter is going to look like this. The third quarter is going to look like this. The second quarter is going to look like this. And this quarter is going to look like this. And if you need coaching about it, get coaching about it to get clear on it and then play full out to have this 90 day be a demonstration of that. 
the bigger picture you're living into. Okay? Absolutely. If you Thank want to play harder, get a better coach. They make you move faster. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, real. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks, this call Thanks for having me. Recorded. Thanks again. Thanks again for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's in the Shine Bright Team Facebook group. So make sure you, you reach out to your teams, you get them to watch it, and bring them along for the ride in the 90 Day Challenge. Bye, everyone. Thank you, real.